Hey, good morning. Sorry, I guess it's good afternoon, folks. Uh, 2021, unbelievable, man. 2021, thank God 2020 is over. I'm sure every person uh, is probably just thinking that. But then you have a great New Year, so I want to wish everybody a happy New Year. Uh, you're coming from TrueCharts.com today. It's uh, Jan 10th, 2021. So really, really excited for this year. So I want to, like I said, wish everyone a healthy, prosperous, and happiness-filled New Year. So we're looking forward to everybody making money this year. And we want to be part of that journey to help you uh, make some good trades and, and money. So uh, just want to get into it. Uh, we're going to spend about 15, 20 minutes today. Keep it short. Sorry, just been busy uh, with, again, with some, had some family emergencies and then holidays, uh, traveling. Uh, I had to travel because of another family emergency. So uh, I just got back uh, last week. Uh, so I had a chance to come back and uh, you know start thinking about what we want to do this year. Um, you know, and things like that. So anyway, let's get into it. So we'll talk about the markets uh, and the unfortunate situation in, in the capital. It's really, really disturbing. Um, I think it was, uh, for me as an immigrant, I think it was really sad to see what was happening. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I think it was something uh, unimaginable. Uh, I think it was the most telegraphed uh, thing to ever have been done. And yet, they were not ready for it. Uh, very, very sad. It's just, I have never seen this happen in any other country in the world ever. Just unbelievable. It's just, uh, I cannot even imagine uh, to explain what is happening. And then incited by um, the moron in the White House. That's my opinion about it. Take it any way you want. And his dogs. That's what I call them. Rudy Giuliani, all of those guys are his dogs. They, that's it. Basically, there's no explanation for this. Challenging something, a tradition that's been going on for 200 years. Really? Does that make any, many sense? Any sense? Anyway, let's get on to it. So the markets ended down for a little bit and end of December. But then on Monday, we saw this huge scoop down and then bang, it started rallying. And, you know, that's a good sign for the markets. Um, we think they say as goes the first year, first week of January, so goes the year. So if the markets end up positive for the first week of January, that's what's going to happen the rest of the year. You may see pullbacks, you may see whatever. But I think the key thing you have to note is the Fed is really, and all the central banks, not just the Fed, the Fed is buying assets at a non-stop pace. They just keep printing money left and right. It's just mind-boggling what is going on. It's just like unbelievable. The M1 money supply, the M2 money supply, they are just shooting up and there's no sign of letdowns in those, uh, in those money supply numbers. And the Fed has again telegraphed their position. Oh, we are going to keep purchasing the assets at this rate for the rest of the year. What does that tell you? That tells you this market is going to become an even bigger bubble than it already is. I don't care what people say. It's a bubble. Okay. It's just get on with it. Just make the money and get the heck out when you need to. Okay. It's just that's as simple as that. So we are going to see this go on throughout the year and, and people will be holding their pulling their hair out trying to figure out what is going on. But it is very obvious. The Fed put is in place and everybody's of the belief that the Fed is not going to let us down. And, and that's what's going on. Every central bank is printing money left and right and is just going into the markets. With rates at zero, it does not help. And then you're seeing asset inflation like everywhere. Housing, stocks, you name it. And it's, it's just like unbelievable. Tesla up 1,100%. Like, how does that make any sense? I mean, is is Fed Powell just sitting there, oh, oh, that's okay. It's up only 1,100% in a year. That should not be a problem. I think it needs to go up 3,000%. Uh, that tells you um, that the Fed is clueless. It has lost control and it does not know what to do anymore. And, and they just keep printing it and printing it and they just keep moving on and on. And guess what? We said the Dems will win and we expected that to happen. And that's exactly what happened. And guess what? They're going to print that $2,000 stimulus check. And guess where it's going to go? In the markets. And so it's going to get signed off. 
it's go i don't care what the gop thinks but that check is going to get signed off and it's going to get that's the first thing uh, joe biden is going to do and as soon as he gets into office i hope the first thing he does is he sits down in his office and says oh bring all the everything all executive orders that that previous moron signed i want to negate every one of them i want to cancel every single individual executive order that he wrote i want to cancel every one of them i hope that's what he does because that's what they deserve and anyway i'm being passionate about this because it's just mind blowing what's going on anyway so what we think of the market so let's get into the nasdaq we've been steadfastly bullish and you know it's it's been working so you know some of so we said at the end of the year we did a calculation um one of our accounts was up about 62%, one account was up 52%, and then another account was, we started that late, uh, that account was up about, I think about 15%, so that because we started that much, much later. So anyway, so we're gonna get into it and get started. Um, so let's look at the DIA for the uh, Dow Jones. So we said the Dow broke 30,000. We said that's exactly what happened, so this reflects that. We said there's a breakout. We think this is going to 32, so 320 is our target, like 32,000. Um, you know, you're looking at the indicators and let's look at the weekly chart. It was a breakout. And oh, by the way, also we had some technical issues that we were still struggling with. We are hoping that they are fixed now. There's there's one piece of the data which was not clear what was going on. We hope that it's working. Sort of looked like it fixed it. Um, anyway, so if you look at the trend line here, um, you can see here uh, there has been no break of the 13 week, no break of the 20 week or the 30 week. The 30 week looks like it's great support as is the 50 week. So you can see this, we draw a trend line here, it broke this trend line and you can draw another trend line right through here. This is which is what we have been saying, it's going to about 32,000 and that's our target. And we expect that the market should move to about 36,000. Um, I have to say it's just, unbelievable anyway so that's what we think let's look at the qqqs for nasdaq that's when another rock and roll thing it just keeps going up and up and up you can see another breakout here let's look at the weekly chart brand new high for the queues that means brand new high for the um you know for the nasdaq you can see this trend up straight up straight up straight up it just keeps going up every day and uh, you know I don't know what to say other than we think this is going all the way up to 350 um, and maybe even 400. So our target for the NASDAQ is about 15,000 uh, for the end of the year. Uh, it's about 25%. Uh, it might be 14,000, but that's what we expect. And then let's look at the SPY. The SPY obviously is also hitting new highs. Look here, we've been again saying the same, the same story. We've been, it's going up, it's going up. We had this pullback here. So let me just plot the Bollinger Bands and see what it shows. Uh, we are probably above it. Uh, so let's look at it. And I'll quickly, uh, let's do the, from the beginning of the year, from last year to this January. And you can see here, the Bollinger Band seems to form a good support, right? So basically you're seeing good average supports and then good Bollinger Band supports, right? So let's zoom in again and see what averages it's bouncing off of. And you can see clearly, you can see it's been bouncing off its 20 and 30, right? It never closed below its 30 day average and it's been bouncing nicely off of its 13, 20 or 30 day. Every, you can see this was, I believe, the Monday trade where it pulled back and then it bounced up. So one, two, three, four, yep. So that was right. So this is the Monday trade. It bounced off its 30 uh, day and it moved up. So nice move up. The MACD is turning positive, you know, and RSI is still not uh, there yet. So, okay, so I like it there. I like the SPY. You can go along any of these, right, to, because they move, they, they're not stock dependent, obviously, right? Because they can, they are an index of stock. So what you would expect is those to move a lot slower. Uh, so, but you know, if you hold them, then the probability of it dropping very fast is very low, right? So, uh, so compared to individual stocks. So again, you can see here the chart, this looks like it's still trending up. MACD is trending up. We think this is going to um, 390 about 390 so about 3900 is what my target is about 9 to 
maybe even four 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 hundred. So that's about nineteen points from your or one hundred ninety points on the S and P. Uh, I project that earnings are going to be very very good from the tech companies. Okay, so knowing what the tech companies are doing, knowing what I see in the markets uh, over on the semiconductor industry, there is a huge shortage uh, uh, capacity constraints. For all semiconductor companies, you saw the recent news where it's talked about GM, Nissan, and all these auto companies stop their production lines because there's a shortage of semiconductors. That's a huge, huge thing. I have never heard that before ever. That tells you that the factories are running at full capacity and beyond. So, and there's no place, and cycle times are elongated because people just cannot get enough of the semiconductors. Because and that's going to be that tells you that semiconductor earnings are going to be very good, and that's why you're seeing all these stocks like Skyworks. We had picked that. We actually traded that last week uh, in my account, uh, and it broke out to a new high. Okay. We had also picked Corvo. If you recall, uh, a few weeks ago, that also did very well. Broke out to new high. You can see gap up, huge volume. And if you recall, we've always been saying gap up, huge volumes. You just buy. You just don't think. You just buy and especially big name stocks right, that are very very popular so avago is another one right um moving up it's at 450 bucks on wow unbelievable uh so those stocks all the semi stocks are doing very very well okay it doesn't matter what company it is it's doing well in this sector so uh it's the rising tide lifts all boats right? it doesn't matter which which company it is even if they're not doing well they are being lifted by this right so Micron earnings were interesting. They were not phenomenal. They were okay, okay? Uh, I mean, I did not expect DRAM, uh, you know, companies to do that well. Even though there's demand for DRAMs, the stock was driven up primarily just because of this, oh, there's a shortage in the industry. That means DRAMs must be doing well. But DRAM is a very price-sensitive uh, product. So, you know, there are a lot, there's a lot of competition from Samsung and other companies in this sector. Uh, so what you'll see is you saw that it spiked up. This is a negative bar. We expect it to pull back. Uh, so I would sell Micron here. Okay. So I want to go quickly through some of the other trades I did last week. I did Zillow. I made money. I made money on this stock every time I've traded it. Like every time I made money on this. I bought it at 38. It's at 145. Uh, but I've been also trading in Intra in some other accounts and it seems to be working. And then this one and there was another one I did. Let's look at Apple. Um, Apple looks decent. So why I'm talking about Apple today is because um, you heard the news that they were saying that TSMC had a very strong quarter and primarily driven by iPhone, uh, I, iPhone, iPhone 12 demand. So that tells me that we can project Apple to have very good earnings uh, coming up. Um, I'm very hesitant to trade the stock. I know it moves very slightly up and down. But um, I think the stock on a weekly looks very decent. So let's look at the weekly chart. Um, and then I'll go through some of the picks uh, for next week. So it looks like the only concern I have about Apple is its valuation, right? It trades at 10 times, more than 11 times revenue, um, which is unheard of for a hardware company, uh, even though they do software and stuff. But, uh, you know, they are not into software for... Uh, servers and things like that. They just make their own software for their own uh, OS. Um, and then you look at it and you think this lo almost looks like a double top, but I think it will probably go sideways. I mean, it's tough to say. Either it breaks out or it falls, right? It's one or the other. So we'll have to wait and see for the earnings. So I'm not trading the stock. Even though I'm thinking about trading it short term, I'm not sure if I'll do it. So uh, I'm, I'm going to wait on that, okay? You can see it's got very good support at its 30 day. Uh, it broke here briefly and then it broke back up above it. So, okay, so let's go through. Um, okay, so I want to just again talk about, you know, I keep harping on this uh, and options trading in retirement accounts and stock trading in retirement accounts. Okay, I want to emphasize that when you're trading options, um, or doing covered calls or cash secured puts in retirement accounts. That's a good idea. Even trading in those accounts and making money is growing that money tax free. Okay. Think about that. That's a double whammy. I keep saying that be careful, but I think there's a huge opportunity to make money there. Okay. So keep picking the right stocks. We'll talk about some stocks today that look very, very decent. Um, 
and I will bring those up after I show you one part of a screener. So one screener um, I want to show you today is how to find 52 week highs on our site, all of them together, right? So the way you do that is you go to newest high within n days. So you click on that and then you can click 260. Okay, 260 is the number of days in a year that the market trades. So you can click start scan and it will go pick out all the new highs. We don't call it 52 week highs because we want to give everybody the chance to pick closing highs like 10 days ago, 20 days ago, whatever. So we just call it 260. But I want to show people this so that they know how to find 52 week highs. So you can see here found 1,300 stocks. Uh, that does 52 week highs that encompasses NYSE, NASDAQ, Amex and every um, everything on the NASDAQ on the low price. So you can see Tesla, uh, you know, I, I cannot believe I missed this. Why is the chart not showing up? Okay, there it is. Oh, that's weird. Hmm. S&P. So you can see here these stocks touch 52 week highs, right? This uh, uh, this this past week. Uh, so on Friday. So that's how you tell by looking at this list. Uh, you can just you can just expand it to 500 stocks that way you don't have to go through each page that's what i typically do you can see baidu was on the list here hit a new high uh, we had picked that some time back uh, tsm touched a new high but i think it's going to pull back it's a very very expensive stock um, again valuations right now are not mattering because primarily because of the fed right nobody cares what the valuations are there's a stupendous stupid amount of valuations going on anyway marvel it touched a 52 week high you saw a red candle so that means it probably pulled back vips uh, so many of them okay so i just want to show everybody this i traded uh, applied material uh, last two weeks i made money on the short side of it so i'll show you um, i made money short and long so what happened was i i shorted it here so I made money when it pulled back and then I was watching the stock and I said, oh, this looks like it's going to break out. So I sold some puts and those were cash secured puts. So the stock got put to me and the moment it broke out, I sold it about 90. It went to 95, which was not my expectation. But anyway, I sold it. But you can see here, uh, our algorithm works very well, right? It picked a buy here at around 62. The stock went to 90 and then put out a buy here and still it's on a buy mode. Okay, so RSI is high, MACD is positive. I think the stock could go to 100. Okay, anyway, let's go through that. So I want to quickly go through my picks for next week. Okay, so here are the picks. So let's go to this. These are some conservative stocks that I'm watching. So I want to show ETR. Okay, why I like the stock. If you look at the stock, let's look at the weekly chart. Okay, so even though I think it could go to 90, I wouldn't buy it unless it touched 90 or below, right? Because, um, you know, it had moved up quite a bit here. Uh, it's at the bottom of its range. I think it's going to pull back probably to 90 before I would look into buying it. Anyway, keep an eye on this one. Then the other one was EXC. EXC, Exelon Energy is another one. Um, this looked okay. I was not sure if I wanted to buy it. Uh, so I put it on my list. I think because I think this moved above its 13 and 30 days. That's why I picked it. So let's look at the weekly chart. Keep an eye on this. Um, you know, again, energy stocks are very volatile right now. So I would be very hesitant. But it does electricity. So, you know, it looks like the good thing is the low is around 34 bucks and the high is about 50 right so there's a nice range here so i wouldn't buy it if it unless it went below 40 okay so i wouldn't buy it until it went below 40 so keep an eye on that you can set up the alerts on our site so you can say um send me an alert where is the alert uh, so alerts let's see here alert is that it where is the alert this is a way to set an alert hmm weird where does that go Okay, let me find out from my, or maybe he took it out. Okay, I'll, I'll find out and I'll, I'll publish on the next uh, video. Okay, next one I liked was um, McDonald's. Uh, let me show you that chart. Um, looks pretty decent. You can see here, it's moving up. So I, my target is 230. That's where his resistance is. So this looks like a good trade. All the indicators are moving up. If you look at this, all indicators are moving up. Let's see where our strategy put out a buy. 
and yep it put out a buy on friday okay so uh, it was moving sideways so i target about 220 to 230 is what i suspect you should expect in the stock so this looks very good and the next one was a better sign why i like better sign i'll show you uh better sign is a nice range bound stock okay so you can see here this was a hammer candle right here so i it's a range bound so it touched 195 is a low and 215 to 220 is a high so it's bouncing off a low i like it i think it's a good stock rsi is moving up it came below below from 30 um i like the stock okay i think it could move all the way to 210 so there's a good opportunity to make money actually i'm thinking of buying this uh tomorrow uh that's one and then the other one was um lows um lows also looks good on a technically you can see here that a nice bar up and let's look at the weekly chart uh, the reason i like this stock is because it's in the whole building it and so it looks like it wants to go up so i like it there so lows is another one and then i want to show you paypal 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 also looks good uh looks like it wants to break out it's this already a breakout right here you can see this horizontal lines here it broke out tested it it's going higher again right now valuations don't matter i thought eventually they would matter but nobody cares so you can just buy and trade it uh sjm is another one jm smucker and i'll tell you why i, I like the stock um it's been moving sideways in this channel so it seems to move between one 12 to 120 so we think it might actually break out it's got a good i mean it's a sugar company all they sell is jams and uh, uh, you know those type of condiments and uh, but they have a good dividend okay so uh, keep an eye on that one and then apple i talked about and then hsic henry shine look at this one this is trying to break out okay uh, this looks very good on a chart uh, let's look at the weeklies on this one um it's at the top of its range so that's the only risk here it's you know it seems to operate between 55 to 75 approximately so it may move up a dollar or two i mean technically weekly it looks strong so it may be a short-term trade but it doesn't fall like right away right it sort of consolidates before it breaks down so i would keep an eye on this uh just uh, put it on your trade list and then AAP and Verisk. Okay, let's look at those. I'll tell you I missed Tesla, so I'm not gonna even talk about it. So it's gone, I can't worry about it. I'm not chasing it, I refuse. It's market capitalization is ridiculous. Everything is ridiculous. All metrics are ridiculous for that company. AAP looks pretty good. Uh, this is because I think this will do well because of the stimulus checks. Uh, so you can see here it has a range at the top range is 180. So I suspect it will probably go there. Uh, technically looks good macd is going up rsi is moving up all indicators are moving up so it's above its 13 week so i think it's going to about 180 you can put that on your list and the last one was verisk let's look at that one there were some more i didn't want to go through too many of them today so just let's look at this one um this looked uh why well, i don't not recall why i picked this i thought i picked this okay i know why i picked this because very close to his 50 day moving average support line you can see here it does break it once in a while so keep an eye on this one so 50 day would be around uh let's see what is 50 day 197 i wouldn't buy it till it touched 197 okay so anyway good company um again valuations don't matter let's see what's price to sales wow their price to sales is 12 wow that's an expensive stock that's really expensive anyway so let's go through that uh so i want to sort of say uh hopefully uh these work out i'll be trading actually some of these this week so there was one more i was gonna trade i forgot to mention oh yes i forgot to put on this amgen i like amgen very much okay look at this technically um it's a it's it's gonna hit this trend line right here so if you draw this trend line it's about 250 and this trend line it broke so i think this is going to 245 in that range so this looks very very strong it's about seven or eight dollars in the stock 
Uh, actually, I'm looking to buy this one. You can see the 13 moved above the 50. MACD is going positive. Everything is going positive. And then if you look at the weekly chart, and then they have a good dividend rate, which is $7, which is pretty amazing. Um, let's look at the weekly chart. Where did the weekly chart go? Okay, there's the weekly chart. You can see here the weekly bar looks very, very strong. So this tells you it's going about 240 to 250 range. So I really like the stock. It's really, really strong. Uh, technically, MACD, weekly, everything looks good. And plus, because the Dems are coming in power, so typically healthcare stocks do very well uh, when the Dems are in power. So keep an eye on that. And then, so I'll put that here in my list, Amgen. Oops, sorry. Let me put that in my list, Amgen, comma, Amgen. Uh, so that looks good. Okay, so that's okay. And then let's look at, I want to thank you guys. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and please provide your feedback. Uh, check out our truecharts.com website. Try that feature that I showed you how to find 52 week highs. You can always contact me at truechartscom at gmail.com. If you have any questions, just email me, no problem. I respond within 24 hours. Uh, and then you can always follow us on Twitter at TrueCharts. Let's make some money. Again, thank you very much. Wishing you a great 2021. And, uh, you know, I'll try to do this bi-weekly. I'm hoping that by next week we'll have our new two pages, front pages updated. So I'm waiting for that. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and click subscribe so you receive the notification when we publish new videos. And then we said we offer real-time quotes and some really powerful screeners. Um, so try those out and check those other videos that I've put. I'll be starting making some playlists that I'll be putting in YouTube so that you can go through a sequence of events. And then once we publish the new site uh, updates, uh, I'll show you how um, to use that features on that updated site. We'll have quite a bit of new information there. Okay. Hey, thanks everybody. Uh, have a great week. Uh, we'll see you within the next week or maybe two weeks from now. Okay. Thank you.